Good evening. How are you all doing tonight? Well, my name is Alexandra, and welcome to another podcast by Greg Middleton. This is Straight Talk featuring Greg. And our guest speaker is David. The title of this segment is The Return of Spring. Here is David. The Rite of Spring by Greg Middleton For musical enthusiasts, this title will pique great exuberance. Personally, it is one of the greatest musical compositions that I have ever heard. The Parisian premiere of this operatic piece, back in May of 1913, nearly sparked a riot because it pierced through traditional expectations and norms. It was so new and innovative, people did not quite know how to process what they were hearing at the time. I will leave the stories about the Parisian premiere to you history buffs. I simply want to use this title and some of the stir that it caused back then. Mankind is not good at accepting new things, especially when they appear to go against society's established norms. Our minds cannot seem to process new things that have never been witnessed or heard of before. The Rite of Spring had that effect upon the initial audience and hence caused the near riot. I can only imagine how the composer must have felt as these sounds were going through his mind in anticipation of actually composing them on paper. When you listen to the Rite of Spring, try to imagine what must have been going on in the composer's mind. All those instruments and tones were racing through his mind as he tried to gather them all and make sense of what he was hearing. This is what composers experience as new innovative ideas come through our minds. Where are those thoughts and sounds coming from? Streams of consciousness from the heavenly abode. We hear it. We hear him. Enough about the music. But I asked my production partner to listen to Stravinsky's entire Rite of Spring as he prepares to underscore this message for what it is worth. Just for the record, I cannot force a message to come through me. That's a good thing, because it is not mine to conjure. If God wants to send a message to anyone, it has to be on his terms. Just as Stravinsky heard the music in his mind prior to writing it on paper, the message comes. We receive and write it down. Anyone wishing to participate in any way in delivering his messages does so at great peril if you don't get it right. So, who wants to volunteer for the task? I opened myself up to the possibility of being used, just in case the Lord decides to do so. However, I will not move, even one inch forward, if I do not feel that it is from that source. As I have already started assimilating this introduction, the actual message is not ready to be pinned at the current moment. My position is to wait prayerfully. If the Spirit comes, It will be on his timing. In my last podcast called The Message, things were said that caused most to think and reflect upon the truth. Just because people tend to ignore things, that are uncomfortable to discuss, this does not invalidate the truth. Truth is synonymous with God. You can't go around God, nor can you skirt around His truth. The truth shines a light, even through the darkness. When God is ready to flood a stream of truth down upon us, it is like being in a thunderstorm, or perhaps a hard rain, sleet, or hailstorm. It will pierce through, and land on its intended target. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah had to say about the Lord's word. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven 
and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper the thing for which I sent it. Isaiah 55 verses 10 through 11 Believers love to hear the good news of the Gospels, but when judgment comes from the Lord, it makes us uncomfortable. Even though most children know their parents love them when they are being scolded, it still does not feel good to be scolded. James, the brother of Jesus, explained to us how our Father allows us to go through things in order to mature and cultivate our immortal souls. He says in James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So without doubt, as I stated in the previous message, as well as chronicled in recorded history, we have been facing trials of many kinds for quite a spell now. One could look at those trials and take the victim approach or stand to the challenge and use it to make a lot of self-improvements of things that are in your ability to do so. On a deeper level, God is working on things inside of you. But the outer stuff, the cares of life, that we get caught up with, are within our grasp. If the Spirit of God is in you, then it will take its own course. All you have to do is, say yes to God. This is finally taking me to the point of this title. The Rite of Spring. I am speaking about the mystery, regarding the overflow of a great surge of creative power, that comes with spring each year. Coincidentally, spring comes right after the harshness of winter. Because of this, it is greeted with great enthusiasm by most of God's creation, including plants, animals, insects, and human beings. Globally, what does spring mean to us? It is a time of rebirth, rejuvenation, renewal, resurrection, and regrowth among other things. It is the season of new beginnings. The earth seems to awaken from a nap, with fresh buds blooming, Animals awaken and come out of their dens. Our farmers take full advantage of this rebirthing season by planting seeds of many kinds that produce much of the food we consume. Livestock gives birth to new offspring that we also consume. Floating pollen traveling through the air find their landing places and produce God's desired results. From a biblical perspective, Winter symbolizes death and mourning, while spring symbolizes new life. Christ says, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly to the full. We also celebrate Easter in the spring, which is the resurrection of our Lord, overcoming the sting of death. Amen. Spring brings in longer days and shorter nights. Spring, by title, represents new life springing from the earth including plants and animals. All these things we associate with the advent of spring. Back in the days of my young adult years, from the middle to the late 1960s, we heard about the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Now, 
I'm not one that dabbles in astrology, but it is a practice that has been around for many thousands of years, long before we could read navigational maps. Ancient mankind followed the stars and learned how to create calendars and trace geological and celestial movement patterns of not only our planet, but far beyond. You might note that a star revealed the place where a child was born upon the earth that was the Messiah. Wise men were able to read such signs and knew where it led them. Long before the arrival of the Messiah, Isaiah, the great prophet wrote, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government, and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing, and uploading it with justice and righteousness, from that time on and forever. Isaiah, chapter 9, verses, 6, and 7. Say what you want about astrology, but beyond the field of dark soothsayers, there is something special, about what God wrote, across the heavenly bodies. Unfortunately, many who practice today's version of astrology, take advantage of ignorance, People are being led to the slaughter, and do not realize it because the Spirit of God, does not reside in dark places. Before you judge me harshly, about mentioning things such as astrology, just know that the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and many beasts and creatures that roam the earth, use these gravitational signals, to navigate their seasonal migration passages, as they always have done. God speaks to them, telling them what? how, and where to go and do. A hidden power once in mankind, that is all but corrupted by the layers of unrighteousness, and wickedness that evades the heart and soul of mankind. Dare I say, this upcoming age, will yield forth a new awareness, for those who have eyes to see, and ears to hear, or the mind to perceive from the spirit. Even as I write this, I know that I will be chastised, marginalized, and even vilified, by the very same community that claims to worship Almighty God. Truth frightens some, who are not certain about their beliefs. If they lack knowledge, let them go directly to God who gives generously, without finding fault. The age of Aquarius, is said to be a time when humanity, takes control over the earth and its destiny, which is our rightful heritage. God gave mankind dominion over the earth. This age will also give mankind, the opportunity to take dominion over the destiny of the immortal soul. Many will take advantage of the revelations of truth, and the expansion of God consciousness. Note, also, where there are human mysteries, there are those, who take advantage of the weak-minded, and those of little faith. They are more vulnerable, and susceptible, to any good-sounding arguments. The Apostle Paul faced much of this, as he went about setting up the physical church that we have today. He had to battle against shaman, soothsayers, and those who practice dark arts. They were familiar with many gods, but not the true God of creation. Of the coming age, new revelations will spring forth, revealing truths unsealed from times before and beyond. A slight rip in the veil, separating the heavenly realm from the carnal, will expose many things, because of the light of God's truth. Those who live by the truth will be exalted but man prefers darkness, over the light, for fear of their wicked deeds being exposed to the light. Regarding the rite of spring, just as there will be an outpouring, of life revitalizing juices, that will summon the new growth, and new birth. There will also be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that will give new revitalizing energies, to those who seek God. They will be filled with His presence, and turn to Him in adoration, praise, and worship. New birth in the spiritual church will spring forth. Not only because of the rite of spring, but the celebrating of the resurrection of Christ during this time of year, will be in the air. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Isaiah, chapter 55, 6-7 Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him, while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, 
let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. All of this cometh with the right of spring, but how many takers will there be? The harvest fields are plentiful, yet far too few workers are in place to gather the fresh, new crop. Are the clergy ready? Let those who have eyes to see, see and those who have ears to hear, hear what is to come. Time is at hand. The wages of sin are at hand. The pardon is at hand. Let the children of God receive him boldly. A new day is at hand. Will mankind accept God's offer? And another thing, to the self-proclaimed, evangelical, community. You know who you are. You pledged your full, throated, support, to this man, a demigod. This is tantamount to giving your full support to an enemy of righteousness. I hope you got what you hoped for because, it is the reward you sought. You shall live with that choice in your decision, because it was from your heart, that such prayers were summoned. There is still time to repent. But if the heart is not there, it will serve no godly purpose. God will deal with you at his appointed time for misleading his people, the flock. Let those who have ears to hear, hear this, caution. Be prepared, to receive the outpouring of the Spirit, of the living God. Again, to Almighty God be the glory, forever, and ever. Say La. Say, La. Say La.